We're gonna remove this snorkel right here. Use a straight blade screwdriver, loosen up this worm clamp. And we can remove the snorkel, just slide it off. Pop this hose off right here. You should be able to just pry it off. And then sometimes it will slide off or you can just twist it. Underneath here, where the throttle body is, there's another worm clamp. You're gonna have to use that same straight blade screwdriver. Loosen that up. And just grab underneath, rock it back and forth a little bit. And the same in the back. There's a couple of rubber grommets that hold that on. Just slide that out of the way. Disconnect the connector right here. Just push up on the lock tab and then down on the tab and slide the connector off. There's two bolts down here. You wanna take those two out. Use a 10 millimeter socket. grab the air box and just slide it out. Now take the oil cap off, grab this cover and just pull it straight up. There's some grommets that hold it on and we'll put the oil cap back on just so nothing falls into it. Take this bolt out right here, use a 10 millimeter socket. Take that out. And grab the computer, slide it out, and flip it out of the way. Disconnect the negative terminal, just pull that rubber piece up, and then use a 10 millimeter socket, loosen this nut up. As you loosen that up, you should be able to take the, take the cable off, slide that off and out of the way. You can do the same on the positive. You don't want to use a wrench on this side. Loosen this up, a uh, 10 millimeter wrench. Slide that up and out of the way. There should be some push pins here. You want to take those off. Just use a trim tool, get underneath those, pop those out, and then grab this cover, slide it up out of the way. Now we can access this bolt here and we'll take that nut off. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Take that off and then right here. Grab this plate, slide it off. And grab the battery, slide it out. Now I'll take this bolt out, use a 10 millimeter socket. Take this nut off here, use a 10 millimeter socket. And slide that off. Check the panel, slide it up, out of the way. Take these three bolts out, use a 13 millimeter socket. Grab this pan and just slide it out of the way. We're gonna take this bracket off right here. Use a 13 millimeter socket. And there's two bolts that are going in from the back side. It's kind of hard to see. All right, once you break them free, it'll be a little easier to take them off. and slide it off. If there's any wires attached, 
uh, disconnect those wires. Disconnect this connector for the O2 sensor. There's a little lock in there, so just slide that out and then disconnect it. Pull that tab up. Should be able to slide this off. And this may have been attached to that other bracket. Now we'll disconnect the O2 sensor down below. Use an O2 sensor socket. This one is a 7 8 and it basically has a slot through it. And loosen it. Once you loosen it, you should be able to do it by hand. Now we're going to remove this bolt right here. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove that. There is two other bolts also, but on this vehicle they're missing. Those are also 10 millimeter. Take that bolt out. And then just grab the shield. And then slide it out. That's where the other two bolts are, right there and right there. There's three nuts we need to remove, two right there and then one in between. And use a 15 millimeter socket. one out. Oops. And the nuts in the socket, so we're good. Now the, <clears throat> the manifold is attached to the head with some nuts and studs. You're going to need a 13 millimeter socket and it's, it's kind of hard to see them so you kind of have to do this blind a little bit. Just loosen those up first. these all started first. And underneath, you might need a, another extension. And loosen those up. I think that's the last one that has to be loosened. Then I can go back with the electric ratchet, take all the nuts off. And take 
those nuts off. I can't see this one at all. There we go. I got it. Now just grab the manifold, slide it up a little bit. And slide it out. When you slide it out, you should be able to tip it up. And take it out. To remove the water pump, you don't necessarily need to remove the exhaust manifold. It's just going to be easier to show on camera. If you're struggling with trying to get some of the bolts out, you might want to do that. It's really not that difficult. Just a couple extra nuts that you have to take off. Remove the wheel. Use a 22 millimeter socket. Take the lug nuts off. Take the wheel off, take this panel off, just use a trim tool. There's three push pins, take those off. This should be another one right there. Just slide that off. Disconnect this O2 sensor connector right here. Pull that little lock out and just slide the clip off. I'm going to use exhaust hanger pliers and remove this exhaust hanger. Just slide these on just like that. If you don't have them, you can just use a pry bar, but these help out, make it a little easier. And just be careful, don't, the exhaust might fall down a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to take these two nuts off, use a 15 millimeter socket, take those off. And we can separate that and just slide this down. I'm just going to push the converter up and out of the way a little bit. Then I can access some of the bolts. There's a shield right here. This shield has to be removed. So I'll take those bolts out. There's three 10 millimeter bolts. These are the three bolts. There's one there, one up there, and then one over there. using a 10 millimeter socket.
get those out. Then just try to reach around, grab that shield, and slide that to the side. You don't even necessarily have to take it out all the way yet. Grab the converter. And it just barely fits taking that out. There's a drain plug right here. You want to take that off. Use a 13 millimeter wrench. Make sure you have a drain bucket underneath. You want to make sure the engine is not hot while you're doing this. And you can take off the cap off the reservoir, the coolant reservoir. See coolant start to come out of there. Now I'm going to use a hose clamp pliers and take these hose clamps, move them up. These are the heater hoses. You can slide it down, just as long as it's off the hose. Just grab the hose, give it a twist, or use a 90 degree pick. Just get underneath it, but this one's coming off. Slide that up like that. And the same on the other one right next to it. We have the same hose, do the same thing. Slide the clamp down. Grab the hose and twist it up. Out of the way. Disconnect this connector right here. Just like that. I'm gonna reach my hand down in here and there's a thermostat hose that you need to take off. It's basically the upper radiator hose and use the hose clamp pliers. Take that hose clamp off. I'm gonna try using a remote hose clamp pliers or a cable hose clamp pliers. Get that lined up and squeeze it. There we go, a little bit of coolant coming out. You might want a drain bucket underneath. And just slide that off. Yep, a little bit of coolant. And then we want to take this hose off, and it's the same thing. There's going to be a hose clamp on it. It's not very easily to see. Try to use the hose clamp pliers. Try while you're squeezing the hose clamp to try to pry the hose off. Might work the best. There we go. Slide that off. I'm gonna remove this coolant sensor. Use a 19 millimeter socket. coolant temp sensor. Now I take these two bolts out, use a 10 millimeter socket.
there's the other one. There's another 10 millimeter, <clears throat> there's another 10 millimeter bolt right here. Take that one off, use the same socket. That bolt's longer. Then grab the housing. And you should be able to wiggle it and slide it towards the driver's side of the vehicle. There is an O-ring in the sleeve. You can twist it a little bit. There we go. We can take this seal out. Just use a pick, get underneath it. Slide that out. Use some brake parts cleaner. Just clean this up a bit. pretty good and take the new seal it may look round like this and it's okay just gonna slide it into place there we go that's all set and we can take this o-ring on the end just take a pick just get underneath it Roll it off like that. Take the new O-ring and slide it over. And there's an O-ring in here. What you can do is grab the pipe and just slide it off. It's gonna be very similar to this O-ring. While you're doing this, you can replace this O-ring as well. Just clean this up. Slide the pick underneath. Take the new O-ring. Should probably clean this up a little bit first. Just take a little brake parts cleaner. Wipe it down. And reinstall it. Just like the other one. And then you want to clean out the inside of here a little bit. Use a rag. You can use a scuff pad and clean it out real good. If you have some wire brushes, you can use a wire brush. Just clean some of the corrosion out. Brake parts cleaner and a rag. And that looks pretty good. You can use a little bit of coolant to lubricate the O-ring. And slide this back in place. And there's this tab that lines up with that slot. So you know it, you have it lined up correctly. That's good. And then you can put some coolant on this O-ring as well so that it's easier when you go to install it in the car. On the front timing cover, we're gonna take this plate off, just use a 10 millimeter socket. Take those four bolts off. A little tricky to get your hands in there. Right, take that off and take the plate off. 
Now we're going to need this special tool. This is going to hold that timing sprocket that attaches to the water pump or the water pump sprocket. Um, if you were to disconnect the water pump from the sprocket, then it is going to fall in and your timing is going to be off and it's just not going to be a good, it's not going to be a good day. So you need this tool. So we'll take this tool. And there's a couple bolts that thread into the sprocket. this in. And then you take two bolts that hold the cover on. Put one right there. And one right there. And we'll tighten these all down. We'll just snug them down. I'll snug these down as well. Not too tight, just snug. It's just got to hold it. Now we can take the bolts out of the water pump that are in the sprocket. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Be very careful. You don't want to drop these bolts. You might want to have a magnet nearby so that you can grab the bolt once it's loose. Or if you have a socket that has a magnet in it, that would be ideal. And slide it out. And there's two more in there, so a total of three. I have a magnet in there, so hopefully it catches the bolt so it doesn't fall down. Otherwise, I'm going to have to take the timing cover off. That's the second bolt. And there's the other bolt. Last one. Now we can take this bolt out right here, use a 13 millimeter socket. And take that out. Now we got to loosen this bolt up right here. Use a 13 millimeter socket or even a 13 millimeter wrench would work. Once you get it loose, do it by hand. that's loose we just slide that out if you want to slide it out all the way you can but you don't necessarily have to this bolt right here you want to take that out use a 13 millimeter socket loosen that up
and take that bolt out. It's a lot easier to take that out from up top. Now on the back, I will take these two bolts out, the 13 millimeter bolts. You don't have to take these smaller bolts out yet. So we'll take those out, use a 13 millimeter socket. There's two of them. Get those started. Oops. Take those out. And you can grab the housing. Just try to slide it off. I have to wiggle it a little bit. There we go. A little bit of coolant came out. Now we're going to split the water pump aside from this housing. Use a 10 millimeter socket. Take these bolts out. You can try to grab this cover. Just pry it off. If you need to, you can use a screwdriver or a pry bar. Grab one. Pry under there and slide it up. You can take these alignment dowels, just use a, some needle nose pliers, set those aside, we'll put those in the new pump. Then we're going to take the gasket off of the cover, just use a pick, just get underneath the gasket, slide it off. Take some brake parts cleaner and a rag, just wipe it down. Okay, let that dry. And now that that's dry, take it, the new gasket and line this up. Stay in there. We can take the pump, take those alignment dowels, slide those in the two slots that are a little bigger, and line the cover up. Make sure the gasket's in there all the way. Put the bolts back in. You can put it in a vise if you're having trouble torquing it. Just be careful of the machine surfaces on the back side. Then we're gonna to torque these bolts to 89 inch pounds. Make sure you're on inch pounds, not foot pounds. Just go around, double check. I'm cool with that. Now I take the gasket, it's gonna go in here, just get that all lined up. That should stay in there. Just like that. Take a little brake parts cleaner and a rag. Just wipe this area where the gasket's gonna go. If you see any gasket material, you wanna take a razor blade or a scraper and just scrape it off. 
Otherwise, it should clean up pretty easily. Like that, that should be good. Now we're gonna slide this back in place. We have the gasket on there. Take a look at the pulley. And if you look at the sprocket, try to get this somewhat close, how it's gonna go in there. If you see, it's gonna be hard. If you can see where the bolt hole is right there, you're gonna have to line it up after. But try to see where these two pieces are, or those, those two holes, and then try to line that up somewhat in relation to what you see on the back side of the pulley or the gear. Slide that in place. And just be gentle, just push it in slowly, rock it back and forth a little bit. And we can take the bolts, get those started. Now what I need to do is get that pulley in line with the sprocket. So you can use a mirror if it helps. And then a pick, and just try to get this moved over a little bit. All right, I think that looks good. Those are all lined up. And take the bolts and use your magnet if you can, very carefully. Try to get these to line up, get them started. Other two. You can always try this from up top, see if it's a little easier to get your hands in there. And tighten those down. And if you can fit a torque wrench in there, you want to torque these to 89 inch pounds. Do the best you can. Just go around again, double check. That's good. 
And we can put these long bolts in, get those started. You can get that other one started from up top if it's easier for you. And get this one in from up top. Get those all started. And start tightening those down. We'll, tight, we'll snug the other ones up first before we torque them. And the ones in the back also. And you can go back and torque those if you can fit a torque wrench. Torque all of those bolts to 18 foot-pounds. If you can't, do the best you can. Same with these two on the back. Torque these to 18 foot-pounds. Be sure to re-tighten the water pump drain plug. If you loosened it up, just make sure it's snug. Now we can take this bracket off. Loosen up these bolts. Loosen up the retaining bolts. Pull that loose, just grab the tool and slide it down. Take a little brake parts cleaner and a rag, just wipe this down. If there's any gasket material, use a scraper or a razor blade, wipe it off. Now take the cover, make sure you clean this off, same razor blade and wipe it down with a rag. Then you're gonna take a seal and just line it up. Get the bolts started. And now we can tighten these down. If you have the ability to get a torque wrench in here, you wanna to torque these to 89 inch pounds. Otherwise, do the best you can. I'm just going around double checking. Snugging them down. That's good. Now we can install this. Again, you can use a little bit of coolant on the O-ring. That'll help, help uh, install it a little easier. And just 
slide it in position. Twist it back and forth a little bit, slide it in. And take the three bolts. The longer one is going to go in the bottom. started. Might be easier to line the top one up first. the top one this go. Now I'm going to snug up the bolts. You can get a torque wrench in there. You want to torque those to 89 inch pounds. Now I'm going to reinstall the coolant temp sensor. started. You can snug it down and then if you want to torque this, if you can fit a torque wrench, you want to torque this to 15 foot-pounds. Now we can plug it in, find the connector that goes to that, line it up, lock it down. Now we'll put the hoses on, use the hose clamp tools, just get this lined up. 
over the thermostat housing. Just making sure this is going the right way. Let's go on that side. No. Slide that all the way on. Get the clamp lined up. I can take the tool off. That looks good. And I have the other hose over here. We'll do the same. All right, that's good. There's a little clamp that goes from the vacuum line to the brake booster. That just goes over that hose. Just slide that on. And now these back hoses, try to slide these clamps over first. up somewhere good and slip it on release the tool and I'll do the same on this one on there. Now we're going to reinstall the converter, Just slide it in position. It's a little bit tight here, you got to wiggle it a little bit. I'm going to slide it up there, kind of out of the way a little, so we can take that shield. Slide that shield in place. So that shield can stay there. And get the bolts lined up for the shield. Three bolts. And one more at the top. I can find it. Where is it? Tighten those down. And line the exhaust up. You want to put a new seal in there. Slide it in the hanger. Put the nuts on. And we'll tighten these down. Connect the connector, just line it up. Lock it in place and then put the lock through. Just like that. 
Just make sure the wire is not touching the axle. Install the shield. Take the push pins, line those up, push them down. Put the wheel on. Put the lug nuts on. Now I'm going to torque the lug nuts to 140 foot-pounds in a cross pattern to tighten the wheel down evenly. Now let's just go around again. Double check. It's a good idea to check and see if there's any debris um, that you need to wipe off from the head. Um, everything looks good on this vehicle, so we're just gonna put the gasket on. Same way we took it off. Take the manifold, just slide it down. And you want to slide it over the studs. And put all the nuts on the manifold. Get those all started first. And there should be 10 nuts total. Now I'll tighten these down. Just hold the manifold in place. And if you can get a torque wrench in there, you want to torque those to 124 inch pounds. Do the best you can.
Oops. That's all of them. Yep. All right, I got them all. Now you can put the nuts on for the converter. You might have to pull the converter up a little bit, get it to line up. And tighten these down. Just go around, try to tighten them down evenly. Just go around again. all the way on. Looks good. And put the shield in place. And you have three bolts. Get those three bolts in place. Tighten those down. Put the O2 sensor in. Get that started. your socket and snug it up. Connect the O2 sensor, put the lock in, and this should clip into the bracket that we're going to put in now. Slide the bracket in place. If you can, clip that O2 sensor in right there. Put the two bolts in.
tighten those down. Put the battery tray back in. Put the bolts in. Get those started. those down. Now slide this panel in place. Make sure the wires come on the inside, the battery cables. There's a couple ears that go down into those slots. This has got to go on this stud. Put the bolts back in. Tighten that down. Slide the battery in place. And tighten this down. Tighten down the positive first. You can connect the negative. Tighten that nut down. Snug it down and then just give it a wiggle, make sure it's tight good and put this bracket on get the bolt started and the nut tighten those down All right, put this cover back on and if you have those push pins put those three push pins in place now we'll take the computer. There's a couple, couple of slots where these two tabs are gonna go. Slide those two tabs into the slots and then put the bolt in here. And tighten it down. And line the air box up. Take the two bolts, put those in. Tighten those down. And take the wire, connect the mass airflow sensor, lock it down. Take the oil cap off and take the cover, line it up, and put the cap back on, and line the air ducting up, slide that in position, the grommets in the back, push those down. They gotta get lined up. Yep, that's good. And line it up with the throttle body down below. Tighten the worm clamps. And the one down near the throttle body.
to snug them down. Install this hose. Lock it in place. At this point, we want to add our coolant. You want to add a 50-50 mix. Make sure it's the correct type of coolant. You want to fill it up and then run the engine for about 10 minutes, let it warm up. Once the coolant circulates through the system, then shut the vehicle down, recheck the level, and adjust accordingly.